Um, just to say, what was the highest point, do you think, in your cycling career? It might not have been a medal, I appreciate, but what was the, what was the most memorable and special thing that uh, you experienced? Meeting my husband. Yeah, I wondered if that yeah. if, if I If I hadn't uh, gone into track cycling, if I hadn't have followed in my dad's footsteps and, and everything he put me through, if I hadn't stuck with it, our paths never would cross, because he's from Tasmania. Our paths would never have crossed. You know, opposite ends of the globe. Um, so yeah, that would definitely be the highlight. I knew that you couldn't do it, that you couldn't do Always. it, and you yourself started to believe that. Yes. And if you started to believe that, then how did you overcome it and come who you are? Do you know, I have always and still continue to be underestimated. People, you know, people never ever seem to go, you know what, you can really, you know, people go, oh, well, you might not, you won't do it, you can't, you're too, you're this, that, you're whatever. People are so sceptical and negative. Um, and it's weird. I really thrive on people telling me I can't. Because there's something inside that says, I want to stand there with two fingers up the end going, mm -hmm, told you so, <laughs> without, you know, I like the legs to do the talking. I'm like, you know, because they used to say, you're too this, you're too that, and then I'd still win, and I'd be like, bad, eh? Uh, so for me, it was, it, it's always been that tenacity. I think I'm like a little angry terrier on the inside. <laughs> and, and getting my teeth stuck into something, and people, people taking, their, you know, making judgments of me just drives me on, because I just take it, I go, thanks, thanks very much. Take it on the inside and just, focus it, just really use it. You know, when you're lifting weights and it's getting hard, you think, I'm not gonna rep this out, and then you just think, you, so I'm gonna, <laughs> you're gonna prove you wrong, and you just keep it in there, you use it. Um, and I think there's a lot of power in that. Never underestimate your own power and potential, because it's easy for everyone else, but they can't see or measure what's going on. So I say just, yeah, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And everyone says, you know, when I finished my career, I was like, could have done that better, could have won more, could have done this, could. And they're like, in a few years, you'll step back and go, actually, you know, I'll give myself a pat on the back, maybe. Um, so that I think beating yourself up is a negative thing because it's all about, you know, how you feel about yourself, and you're the only one who can stop beating yourself up, which is tough. Yeah. The positive thing would be that not being afraid to take on a challenge. I think when you're a competitive person, you're less bothered about um, what other people say and do, and you just kind of drive, and when it gets tough, you keep driving. So I think the positive thing is just being able to take on, take it on, just take something on. But what do you think are the current barriers for women to get into cycling, and how do you feel we can overcome that? I think the biggest barriers of women getting into cycling would probably be um, the portrayal of the elite scene in terms of road racing because there's such a massive difference between what's available the inequality, a massive difference in the inequality, inequality between what male road cycling and female road cycling represents in fact it's a joke You know, a female professional road cyclist of the best can live like a student if they're really lucky for the rest of their days whereas a male can be a multi-millionaire it's just bonkers because there's not the sponsorship or the support or the races or the, or the um, organization to, to kind of give women the same opportunities I think there's a lot of old school older men involved in cycling that need to just move on shall we say <laughs> and they need to accept more women into management roles organizing roles leadership roles and you know, um, Helen Grant actually said that by, I can't think if she was 2016 or 2020, that 25% of all national governing bodies of sport have to be, the boards have to be female, which I think is a great move forward. I mean, it'd be really nice if it was 50-50, because a diverse management group um, will be far more successful in any area of any kind of industry, anything, organisation. So I think probably the inequality in leadership roles I think if there was more women in charge of more stuff in cycling, that there might be an opportunity for it to move forward into, you know. Female and male sporting heroes. Ooh! Um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, female. Um, 
I mean, growing up for me, it was very much like Denise Lewis, Sally Gunnell, because they're the only ones that got any column inches, really, weren't they? Let's be fair. There was probably loads of women doing amazing things, but we didn't hear about it. Um, male, obviously my dad in the early days. Sir Chris Hoy has also been a massive inspiration for me. Jamie Staff was on the team. Jason Queeley. I got to I got to train with a lot of incredible athletes, and and I feel very blessed and very lucky to have worked with them because I learned so much. Um, how to deal with success and failure, and just sportsmanship, um, sports personship, I should say. Um, but for me, those guys, yeah, I really looked up to them. I mean, I came to the team and they were all like world Olympic champions, multiple, and then there's me going, hi, but I'm just give this a go. <laughs> um, and they were always very welcoming and helpful with my training and if I had any questions or queries. So yeah, those guys are legends, really. Legends. Yeah.